well, well, uh, all of the electron magnetosphere instruments are being pulled down, redacted, or delayed. Um, and this is one that hasn't been. It's been updated. This is They call this geomagnetic, geomagnetic cutoff rigidity. It's measured in gigavolts. It's an energy measurement of your magnetosphere. Notice how you, the greatest energy involves the equator. Um, and when you're talking about the magnetosphere, uh, you're talking about electrons. So I thought electrons got pulled into the poles, but not when they wrap around as they fly by, then they get focused in at the equator. This uh, more and more stuff coming in on silver. I'm just narrating these as they pop up. They're in no particular order, but this is showing you the application is silver. And there are many, many applications. This is why silver should be part of everyone's, everyone's survival pack. Again, in February, we said spray your filters, your air filters, with silver. And this is uh, a recent uh, study showed you how silver in, in air filters reduces the number of active viral particles that come through your air circulating system. But it also kills mold, and it also kills bacteria. So I don't know why people aren't doing it just as part of a, a daily health regime. They also talked a lot about the antibacterial effects of colloidal silver, um, and sh there are many, many different mechanisms that are at play when you talk about bacteria, you talk about membrane polarity, you talk about DNA um, in inability to replicate, you talk about stimulating the macrophages, so you talk about a lot of things when I talk about bacteria. And most of this is against gram negative, but some gram positive. So yeah, it's not, it's selective towards stuff that's more, how do I say, virulent, more dangerous, more infective. The gram negatives usually are, but there's some gram positive uh, bacteria out there that can hurt you. This is the jet stream going up north. Notice it did come in contact with the hurricane on your left and failed to redirect it. That's because of a counterclockwise spiral system that was devoid of water. And then the weather gods got tired of me showing you how every single system just suddenly veered off and would, it's like California had a force field over it and, and literally 12, 13, 14 storms in a row headed right towards California. Nope, didn't make it in. Well, this one made it in, drenched California for about three days. And the system was a massive um, vortex, and we didn't think you could redirect these, but when they develop a flat edge, you know they're meeting high pressure. What would create a permanent high pressure ridge? Well, it surely wouldn't be Mother Nature, because Earth's atmosphere is dynamic and everything is in motion. And one thing pushes on another, it moves it out of the way. So the high pressure should be moving. Um, but you can see that this has not developed any flat edges. Those spirals were allowed to propagate. We'll probably get another image coming back. This is the magnetic field lines on the sun. They do not correspond with other magnetic field diagrams. This shows a south corona hole stream that looks absolutely normal. So when you have instruments that don't reflect the same situation, you have to wonder which instrument is being redacted. I say the one that shows normal is uh, probably the one that's not correct. We predicted strandings for November 1st. There were uh, Sri Lanka had a record stranding. We're predicting strandings again just to prove that there's going to be an alignment December 1st. So on or about December 1st, we're looking for mass beachings somewhere on the globe because we're coming in direct alignment with Planet X. And the Sun and Earth and Planet X are the only parts of this alignment. So you can't blame it on other you can't blame it on other objects in the solar system if there's a magnetic shift that uh, steers these animals into an inlet instead of past an inlet then they will end up um, trying to swim across land to get where they're going 
There's land where they thought there would be open ocean. Yeah, this is a filter picture of the sun. It has an orange yellow filter. The sun is so bright, it washes out that filter. It still appears white. The sun, when you take a picture of it with a filter, should change color. This is how piercing and how brilliant the corona has become. Cosmic ray interaction and collision in the corona is why the sun is hot and why they're creating shade in the sky. This is a document from World Bank. Um, it shows a, a coronavirus plan um, that started early, early in April and is set to go all the way through March 2025. In the year 2025, it's actually 2525, but um, anyways, yeah, somebody knows something that we don't. So every instrument that we've ever used to demonstrate there's a brown, brown dwarf in the solar system and that it's affecting us in a, a, numerous different ways, the, the, the main fingerprint were the electrons. Brown dwarfs are electron factory due to their high rate of spin and their high magnetism. So they create electron jets and high spin. And so the electrons have been a telltale sign. Every instrument that I have just showed you has not been updated. Um, so they just quit updating these. Uh, some of them, the date go back to September. Some of them go back to last year. These were instruments that I used to use. And everything that I've used to use gets taken down. So I must be a completely thorn in somebody's side that every time I throw these in your face, they're like, oh, here we go again. We have to censor more instruments. This one I've never used ever. So guess what? It's updated. Yes, and it shows you um, the geomagnetic energies around the earth they ha and guess what most of the energies was occurring at the equator but you notice i mean this instrument another electron instrument not updated since september um, this is a magnetic field was not updated oh this is that actually was a current one it shows you how the magnetic field is offset but this one isn't so i mean as I scroll through these, we're looking at the dates, 103120. This is another electron instrument. Bam. So, uh, you know, if you don't think somebody's trying to hide what I'm trying to show you, uh, that sure is a coincidence that everything I show you goes bye-bye. The helium instruments, good luck in finding a helium count anywhere. Uh, this is, the, off to the left, you see a wall of water or a patch of water uh, drifting out into the Pacific. That's the remnants of the hurricane. We're going to keep an eye on that, see if it strengthens over the Pacific. It's a colder ocean. At the top of the screen, you see uh, a flattening of a, what once was a spiral system. These systems are, are what's drawing equatorial water uh, up to the north. I mean, and if you want to melt snow, just take hot, warm water from the equator and throw it up there at north, and that's what's happening. So let's keep it on a global map and let's go to a, a different cloud level and different wavelength of infrared. And so we're going to go to the North Atlantic once again. There's several vortexes up there. Uh, we showed you two, but when they start interacting, they elongate, they become oval, and they're harder to see. But we were pointing out uh, one of the vortexes uh, leaving the picture up at the very north that that used to be a nice round spherical system that made a u-turn and went north good thing because europe doesn't need any more rain uh, this might impact norway and switzerland we'll have to wait and see but amazing now this is back to the caribbean sorry we're jumping around i just threw these up and narrate them as they come by Notice that pocket of dry air that's being pushed in the opposite direction that the moisture is being pulled. That's due to a, a vortex that's off the coast of Spain, and that is the 9 o'clock portion of that vortex is, is creating high pressure and throwing it down. 
while the six o'clock portions of these vortexes are low pressure and pulling the stream upward. Um, and I've been looking for that second ghost low pressure system th that uh, helped to push Hurricane Iota west instead of letting it go to where the jet stream was trying to pull it. And I can't find it anywhere. But we notice a, a, a sudden decrease in the uniformity of the river just in this area. This is north of Cuba, Florida's upper left. But we see the water just exploded. And we see some water coming in, some water going out. Uh, but th this is a, a drastic change in the anomaly. It's right at a point where this jet stream, so to speak, splits. But we just noticed when you have an expansion of water like that, that suddenly expands, usually it's because there's more water. But this expansion um, dissipates water. Um, and I wish we could attract that longer. Well, here we go. Look off to the right. See that very strong rotation, uh, lower right, very dry. Um, and when when you have something this strong, it's it's pulling a river of moisture up to, into Africa and Spain, but it's also pushing down. And on the nine o'clock edge, where the nine o'clock position is, and when something comes up that dry and that strong, it, it almost can't be natural, because most low pressure systems are created by uh, hot water evaporating and hot air rising against the cold air creating a spin so and he, there's another dry system right there you can see it's gonna peel and split that jet stream as it already is doing it's gonna try to peel some water off redirect it south the that low pressure system that's creating this particular stream of water is right there in front of you almost dead center where you see water traveling in two different directions 12 o'clock is going right to left six o'clock is going left to right and of course the nine o'clock position as always seems to be dry um, and but anyways that's really interesting to see this happening right before your eyes that low pressure dry system spinning so strong it's pulling water from the equator um, yet there th it started so dry you could almost not see it now that patch of water almost dead center just left the center that patch of water that's kind of drifting out into the Pacific it might be caught by the jet stream you can see a little ribbon going across Mexico um, it's really not a jet stream but um, this what people do call a jet stream this river of moisture always has in the history of hurricanes uh, caused hurricanes to go back out to sea to make a sharp or or gradual right hand turn you turn and go back out to the Atlantic um, but not so in this case and we think it was a system behind it that pushed it through Central America this is the big circular system no flat edge going into California pulling in a river of moisture um, and they drenched California for three days you want rain here you got rain I guess they got tired of me showing you 13 systems in a row that when they got to Alaska developed a flat edge and deviated north and south so anyways that's your update for the day sorry I jumped around so much but I'm in a hurry and notice there's no chirping in the background um, I actually put my life at stake got an extension ladder to a really high high it's a high ceiling here it's a vaulted ceiling and that thing is way up high requires an extension ladder so yes for those of you who are being bothered by the chirping bird in the background it has been silenced no cruelty to animals though thank you